Hey everybody. <coughs> so it is Tuesday, May 25th, and I have exactly seven days before this appointment. So I wanted to make a video to kind of discuss how I'm feeling and what thoughts I'm having. And I also wanted to share with you guys the questions that I'm going to ask because when you go and see a specialist like I'm about to go and see, you want to have questions for them. That way you know exactly what's about to happen. You have a more precise idea of how the whole process will work and nothing comes as a surprise. In my past experiences with trying to go and see a specialist, I found that a lot of times they want to just offer IVF and procedures such as IVF. They don't consider natural or homeopathic ways of doing things. And they just want to, you know, boom, 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 quick, fast, get it done. So <clears throat> to begin, I'm feeling nervous. I'm a little bit excited because while this might sound weird, I hope and pray that they find something which would explain why I continuously miscarry. But at the same time, I hope that if they do find something, it's not something so serious that it cannot be fixed easily or in a timely manner. Um, as far as the questions, so I have about five written down right now. I'm sure between now and the next seven days, I'll have more. But here are a few. What tests do you perform as far as blood work is concerned? You know, I've, again, in my experience, I found that certain offices or healthcare practices will perform, perform some tests and others will not. And you want to make sure that all the tests that can be done are done, especially in a situation like mine where it is unexplainable right now. There's no reason or rhyme. You want to dig and look for every possible situation. Um, how do you feel about me continuing to try to conceive naturally? As I said in the beginning of this, a lot of specialists that I have you know, researched and even heard about, they just want to go straight to let's try IVF, like let's try IUI. And if you're not sure what those things are, I put it in the, in the description of this video, so I'll, it'll be explained there. But they don't want to really look at a natural way of doing things. They just want medications, drugs, and operations and procedures. Quick, fast, in a hurry. And even with those things, it's not guaranteed. And they're really expensive, like really expensive. Um, Another one... Or I guess you can say like a part B to that question. How long before you recommend assistance such as IUI and IVF? So, you know, again, some offices I've heard will allow you to try naturally for a certain period of time. But once they see it's not happening, then they start to look into the different procedures and the different operations and things like that. Another question once I do get pregnant, how long will I continue to see you, you being, of course, the specialist, before you send me back to my, uh, um, my OBGYN, or do you collaborate with my OB until delivery? That, to me, is a really, 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 really good question, because I've actually heard it in um, both in, in different ways, like different, you know, practices do different things. So you never really know. I would like to know, like I said, so that way I'm not surprised. Um, a really good one. What insurance do you accept? If you guys have been following my journey so far, you know that my specific insurance does not support, does not help me in any kind of way with this specialist. So as soon as I'm able to get out of this insurance plan, I would like to get into another insurance plan specifically an insurance plan that if all goes well this doctor actually supports um 
And the last one that I have written down here is, can you recommend any doulas and or midwives once I do get pregnant and things are looking good? I have no issues with, um, I guess you could say, advanced or, or, you know, nowadays doctors and medical teams. I have no issues with them and I actually thank them for a lot of their research and, and a lot of the things that they've done as far as medically advancing, especially America on a whole. However, the way I am and, and who I am, a, a part of me is to be as natural and as holistic as possible. Right now, not a matter of fact, I can get it for you. When I tell you guys I'm natural and holistic, this is my medicine cabinet. These are all essential oils. Shout out to doTERRA. <laughs> These are all essential oils. I have an oil for practically everything. I do not care for prescription medicines, um, over-the-counter medications. I don't, I don't care for those things. I prefer natural and holistic ways of relieving, you know, a common cold or, or uh, an insect bite or, you know, I prefer to be as natural and as holistic as possible. I love my fruits, my vegetables. I rarely, rarely drink juice or sodas. I do not partake in a lot of different medications on a whole. Many people don't know this, but the, my, my first four years of life in a hospital, my first four years of life, excuse me, was spent in a hospital where I was drugged up and full of medication all the time. And I just try my best to stay away from medicines as much as possible because I really truthfully, truthfully believe that your body was created and designed to heal itself, but you have to allow it to do so. So with all that said, I would prefer to have a doula or a midwife. And if not, maybe a doula or a midwife in addition to a doctor. And also just studying the nature and the backgrounds of doulas and or midwives, they are more holistic themselves. They seem to be more in tune with the patient and what the patient wants. And I, I prefer that. I remember when I had my daughter, I went into labor six weeks early. Now, this had been maybe the second or third third time that I went into labor early. And just a little background on that, my daughter was born premature because I had health issues with her. She overworked my liver. It's called intraheptic cholestasis of pregnancy. So to say I had an easy, healthy, happy pregnancy is a lie. My pregnancy with my daughter was high risk. I did go to the hospital a few times. I had jaundice. She overworked my liver, as I said. And it, it just wasn't the greatest thing. And I and I understand all of that. But again, at the same time, I wish that some some of my wishes were granted and, and allowed. Like maybe they could have stopped my contractions before my daughter actually came that day. And allowed me to go further along in my pregnancy because every checkup I had my daughter was fine she was thriving she was doing well I was sick but I wasn't to death's door sick and again I really believe your body is made to do what it's supposed to do and it will do it if given the opportunity then they they allowed me to go into early labor because my body was I was going into labor it is what it is they didn't stop it again this time so I wanted to have a natural birth. No, 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 we, you, you can't have a natural birth. We have to cut you because every time you have a contraction, her heart rate drops. Later, I was told her heart rate could have been um, regulated and I could have tried for a natural birth as I wanted. But 
I also found out later, lots of doctors choose cesarean sections because it's quick, it's fast, you can schedule it, get it out of the way. A natural birth, of course, you don't know when it's going to happen. You don't know how long it's going to take. Some people are in labor for days. Some people are in labor for a few hours or maybe an hour or two. So, you know, I just prefer a doula or midwife instead of or in addition to a, you know, doctor. So those are just some of the things going on right now. When it pertains to this appointment, I appreciate you guys following me on this journey. Um, this is also a great way for me to look back once we do prayerfully have this miracle baby to look back and see all the things, you know, what I was feeling, what was going on in my head, going on in my head, the questions, the concerns, and, you know, just to, to even share with this baby that I will someday have, all that occurred for them to be in this world. But again, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Any questions, any concerns, any comments, be sure to drop it in the comment section. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. That way you can follow me on my journey because I really feel like we still have a, a, quite a ways to go. Even if I was to, to get pregnant right now, we still have at least another nine or so months of me carrying the baby and anything is possible. So follow me on this journey. I'm excited. I'm scared. I'm nervous. But as you know, it's always great to have a support system. And to those of you who've been watching, thank you because you are a big part of my support. I will see you guys soon. Have a good one.